Good morning, guys. It, this is Wednesday, July the 29th, 2020. This is Sheila's One Stop Coaching Channel. If you've never been with me before, my name is Sheila Texter, and I'm so glad that you are here. But I want to ask you to subscribe to my channel, share it, like it, comment on my videos, especially on the days that they come out and help promote this channel. I hope to eventually start doing maybe some prizes and things like that. I've seen other channels do those kind of things. I'm wanting to do like a giveaway with my book. I don't know just when or how I'm gonna do it, but I, I got to learn how to use that number generator thing or you know, to randomly select a winner and do like maybe a three day, everybody that likes and shares and comments and tags people in that post or through that post will be put in for a drawing to possibly or will win a copy of the book for free. And I will, if you're out of state, I will send it to you. But I am still kind of working on that, trying to make a decision on how to go about doing that contest. So just um, stay tuned, continue to watch, and watch for that, because that, that is coming. I just gotta figure out how and when I'm gonna do it. My book is ready. It is in print. It is on Amazon. You can go to Amazon and order it. You can order it from me. You can contact me through my Facebook Messenger. It's just under Sheila Texter. I also have a Sheila's One Stop uh, Facebook, po uh, Facebook page as well. But today, my goal is to every Wednesday, I will read out of my book on Wednesdays because Wednesdays I put out content about my writing journey, about writing and sharing the things that are going on and sharing the things about my book and where it's at and what it's doing and reading an excerpt out of it. And on every, and every Friday, I put out like a coaching video, an inspirational coaching tip, motivational, transformational, always pretty much going to do with the mind, but always will bring a scripture as well with that on Fridays to help a person see that you can be a Christian and you can do things in this life. And I, I always said, I always think about the scripture where God says that we as being fleshly, we know how to give good gifts to our children, how much greater he wants to give to his children. He don't want to see us suffer. He doesn't want to see us depressed and down and defeated and defeated by the enemy. Yes, we're not exempt from the heartache. We're not exempt from the problems in this world. But we have an extra foothold. We have God. We have God on our side. And that, my friend, makes all the difference in the world. I mean, it doesn't mean things will still not happen. But when they do happen... We will not run and throw our head in the pillow or throw our head down in the dirt and say, oh my God, what am I going to do? No, we will take it to God and we'll say, God, what are you going to do with this situation? And I am so glad that I know him like that and that I know his power and that I am a friend of God and he knows my voice and he hears my voice in the morning times when I pray to him. But today... My goal is to read out of this. This is called, you can't see the words, but the, this is a man's head. This is called The Betrayer. This is in part two, A Different Set of Eyes. And every week I'm trying to, I've just started doing this a few weeks ago, marking the place that I've already read. That way I don't reread. So I may reread some because I hadn't been marking them before. But hopefully after a few weeks you won't be rehearing some things that I've already read. Guys, I got a shipment of books in about two weeks ago, a little bit over two weeks ago, and every one of them is gone. So I have sold with Amazon, 
probably almost 80 books in about two weeks. So, I mean, I'm very, I am very pleased with that. I am very pleased with that. I got another shipment coming in probably Monday. They possibly will be in Saturday, but it'll be Monday before I can get them from the post office. But, guys, they're selling like hotcakes. I've got people reaching out to me, telling me that I can set them up in their stores. And so I'm looking forward to that. Um, the Christian Bookstore here in Blyville, Arkansas, is going to display them and help me with them. And if they sell good and they're of a great demand and people come in looking for them, they will carry them. So I'm looking for God's finger of favor to be on these books. Well, I know that they are. I know that his finger is on them. I have sent them to a couple of uh, big name pastors. And I said, now God, if this is meant to be, you will open that door. If it's not, then you will shut the door. That's the way I pray. I don't pray. All I'm, all I'm doing is knocking. I'm asking, I'm seeking, and I'm knocking. And if God opens that door, then I will walk through it. But if God doesn't open that door, I'm not going to force it open. You, you, that's where you got, that's the relationship that you got to have with God. You got to know when he's not opening a door and you don't force it open. But I'm going to read this right quick. Um, my glasses. And this is in The Betrayer. When she first started coming to church services. No, I don't want to read that. My bad. It was a natural high. I don't know what it's like to do drugs, but the feeling I had in those moments, even before we acted on the temptation, was addictive. When life is stressful, we often look for a place to escape to, a place where reality is altered or distance. We look for a place where lack of money lack of intimacy, and even lack of purpose become insignificant. Even so, I knew there would be a cost as I was sucked into the deep hole of adultery. It's difficult to think logically when we're at a low point and temptation beckons us with that escape. Perhaps we don't want to think at all. I started to avoid all those in authority in my ministry. I knew my elders knew something was wrong. They just couldn't put their finger on the problem. It was like I lived for the next fix, the next meeting, where she would confide in me, trust in me to help her res find resolve in God. I saw her brokenness in those days. I was disgusted at the man who would destroy a lady as special and as fragile as her. But it wasn't my place. It wasn't my place to save her. It wasn't my place to sweep her off her feet. It wasn't my place when she was married. And it wasn't my place after God gave me a family of my own and a responsibility to be a leader and a pillar in our church. There is always a fight between good and evil. And when at a place of weakness, stay guarded especially when you're doing the work of the Lord. Satan can strike even within the walls of the church if we allow him in. So my dear friend, I just want you to know that it can happen to anybody at any time. We're not above, we're not above failing in this area of adultery and infidelity. We're not above it. I wasn't above it. I remember saying in my younger days that when my first husband would cheat on me, I would say to God, God, how can somebody betray you that says they love you? How can somebody cheat on you that says that they love you? I don't understand that. I would ponder that and I would ask that to God. Well, when, when I fell in that area, it was like God pricked my heart and he said, this is how they do it. This is how it can happen. 
this is how it happens. People let down their guard. People get wore down. They get they get where they're just they're tired. And again, I, t I tell you in the book, I don't make excuses for what I did. What I did was wrong. I'm unexcusable. And I don't know that my days of reaping are over. I don't know. But one thing I do know is God let me know. Sheila, you're not above it. Nobody is above this enemy. So my friend, if I had any kind of uh, suggestion to you today, if you are married, you are in the ministry, whether you're in church or not, but mainly if you're in church, because this is, I'm a Christian author, faith-based. This happened in the confines of the church. I want to tell you to guard yourself. Guard yourself. Go to your companion. Go to somebody that will help you. Reach out to somebody and say, I'm having these feelings. I'm having this problem. I need help. Don't try to go it alone, my friend, because you will fail. And another thing I will tell you, don't go to another weak person. I did that. I went to the people that I knew that was going to feed that thing. There were several other people that were having the same problems. There were several other affairs going on at the same time mine was. And we connected. And we talked about what we were doing. We wouldn't want to talk to nobody that, that would tell us, don't do that. My friends, stay guarded. That is my prayer to you today. That is my, <clears throat> my voice today in this book. Failure is not final. But there is a way that you cannot fail at all. God is able to keep you from falling. But you've got to let him. You've got to let him. And the biggest thing is you've got to keep that prayer life up. And you've got to keep that guard up at all times. Whether you're single, married, whatever. Single people, you know, the loneliness can drive you into the arms of other men, women, whatever. Whatever you are, whether you're a single man or a single woman. That loneliness can drive you into the wrong arms. And it can even drive you into somebody else that is single. And then next thing you know, you're doing things you're not supposed to do. It don't mean we're bad. It don't mean we're that we're that we're the most evilest people in the world. No, it is something that God put in us in the beginning of time. He put it in us. He said it's not good for man to be alone. It's something that we crave. We crave the attention of opposite sex and our companionship it don't mean we're bad people but there is a avenue that we have to channel those feelings in and we have to channel them through God and we'll get off here today didn't intend to go that way but you know what I just want God to lead me even on these channels and even on these videos that if I can help one person if I can help one person with this book if I can help one person with these with these videos I feel accomplished, but I know that I'm helping more than one. I know that I'm helping more than one. You would not believe the messages that I am getting, texts, Facebook messages, that are just blowing me away with how they feel about this book and how they feel about this thing. And some of them that have been there and some that are saying, I had no idea. And they're, you know, and I'm so thankful that God used you to help me and guys, that's worth it all. If you know, if I don't never make another dime on these books, to know that I helped somebody get up out of that pit and reach for God and get back on their feet and walk on, that I have served God well. So y'all guys, stay with me, be encouraged, come back Friday. I'm gonna have a coaching tip. For a little while, I'm going to coach on writing. I'm gonna talk about the writing journey. No, I've only wrote one book. I had a lot of help, but I did learn some things along the way, and I believe that I could help some first-time writers. So if you want to help, 
you want me to help you, then be sure and watch for me on Fridays because I will be giving and sharing some coaching tips and writing along the way and will still always bring a scripture because that's my goal is to help somebody through the Word of God. I'm going to get off here today. Y'all have a great week, great weekend. Stay prayed up. Stay prayed up, people. We're in a, we are in the coronavirus season, but God is greater. He is greater. He is greater. He is greater. And I love you guys. Thank you so much for following me these for following me on my YouTube channels. Follow me on Facebook because we're going somewhere, guys. We're going somewhere and we're going somewhere with God. Y'all have a great day and I will see y'all Friday.